Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the GeoWorks Hexagon 3D Singapore Sandbox webinar. At GeoWorks, we are SLA's Geospatial Industry Center, and the 3D Singapore Sandbox, we provide the 3D uh, models for 160,000 building models in Singapore. And Hexagon's a part, one of our partners who allows um, access to these models via the software. And today we have uh, Tak Ching from Hexagon with us to provide a demo on how to use Hexagon's platform on the sandbox. But uh, before that, we would love to know more about you and how you uh, would like to, what we'd like to get out of this webinar. So we would like to first um, flash a poll and um, we would love to see your input from the poll, please. Thank you. If you could uh, just um, provide your input for the first question. Okay. All right, so that's a good number. So 50% of you do know about the sandbox, well, almost 50%. Um, that's great. And we would love to hear um, your uh, questions as well about how to use um, the sandbox or what kind of use cases you like to get out of it. So um, I would love to pass on um, this uh, session right now to Touching. Over to you, Touching. Hi, okay, uh, thank you, Vanessa. So uh, just let me share my screen. Okay, can everyone uh, see my slides? <clears throat> okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's uh, what we as a geospatial practitioner goes by this phrase every day. Uh, trying to understand and decipher the thousands words that the picture is trying to tell us. So the main difference is uh, our pictures enable decision making, our pictures enable actions. So in today's world, we are living in a world full of sensors and each sensor is painting their own picture. So this makes our work as a geospatial practitioner more challenging as now instead of looking at a single picture, we are actually looking at a lot of multiple picture that could be situated in different frames. So example is like, uh, I'm sure some of you have uh, experience of uh, looking at, on a single monitor of a certain data set, then uh, which only tell you specific uh, information from a specific sensor. And you may have to correlate uh, with another sensor and you have to look at another monitor. So these are some of the challenges that we are experiencing uh, in today's world. And it's always a challenge to analyze a multiple picture and trying to find the correlation and to derive a common picture. So good afternoon to everyone in our region and good morning and good evening to the rest of the world. Thank you for tuning in to our today's webinar where we will talk more about the technology that will help you paint that common picture. So my name is Tech Ching, a pre specialist with Hexagon Geospatial Division. So our topics for today is about how we can help you to get that common picture by combining data into a single application and doing analytics uh, simultaneously. So this is a brief overview of what I'm going to go through today. I'll give you a brief overview of Hexagon. Uh, then subsequently, I'll dive into my division, which is uh, the geospatial division and some of our technology. Then, of course, I'll go into uh, the technology that is being deployed in the sandbox environment. So Hexagons is an information technology provider. So we mainly focusing towards uh, geospatial and various industry enterprise solutions. But we are unlike any other company that you may know or any other uh, geospatial or GIS company that you know. So what is unique about us is our portfolio of different sensor, software, and autonomous solution. So uh, from what I understand, there's not really a company out there with a very similar mix. 
So here's a summarized overview of our company. As you can see from the numbers, uh, we are a very strong company, which you can depend on and rely on for your geospatial journey. With a global reach in uh, 50 countries, including one in Singapore, we can support you in all your geospatial journey, no matter where you are from. So in order to offer a unique and comprehensive portfolio of sensor, software, and autonomous solution, as part of our acquisition, so for those who are uh, Lao Jiao or old timer, I'm sure you have heard of uh, some of these companies like Intergraph, Adas, Luciat, and Lycajo System. And now they are all part of a uh, hexagon family. So a research has revealed that less than 5% of a plant generated data is currently put to good use. So there's a lot of reason why, including like improper data management strategy, uh, limited application expertise, and of course, a lack of resources availability. So we need to really leverage on these other 95% of this data for better situation awareness, uh, to have a better a holistic assessment, as well as uh, to make some uh, sound decision. So this is where we at Hexagon came in. So Hexagon invested heavily in our R&D to accelerate innovation to close this data leverage gap. So today, the biggest, uh, the single biggest technology challenge uh, businesses are facing is actually putting all this data to work because data creation is outpacing our ability to use it. So think about the 25 billion devices that is currently connected to the internet today and the expectation that this number will be more than doubled by 2025. So it means that the gap between the data creation and the usage is just going to get bigger and bigger. So our solutions are organized around an ecosystem. And of course, at the core, all the ecosystem is just a complex network of interconnected system capable of outcomes beyond the scope of any uh, individual market. So we participate in two uh, of the most uh, critical ecosystems on the planet, the production and the urban. So the production ecosystem is actually made of uh, many other ecosystems like uh, manufacturing, uh, industrial processing, agriculture, mining, amongst others. And of course, the urban ecosystem is comprised of uh, cities and their environment, extending all the way to uh, national nation's uh, border. So we have solution uh, for each of these uh, different uh, ecosystem. So Hexagon Geospatial is where I'm from. So our goal is to help you to reach uh, some of your uh, some of your geospatial solution. So what do we do? So we essentially is to make, help organization to make sense of their uh, raw data, be it a raster, vector, uh, static, uh, dynamic, or structured, unstructured. Then of course, we help the organization to harness the power of change. Essentially, what we at uh, Geospatial Practitioner do is we are trying to understand the changes that is uh, between the, the different data set and help the organization to understand uh, uh, things that have changed uh, over time. Then, of course, we help them, we help to give you some uh, meaning form, meaningful form to your geospatial content. Uh, instead of looking at tables and charts, now you have a more contextual relationship in terms of like uh, where, who, and what is happening to your, uh, your all these uh, uh, data. Now, of course, the main goal is to give some meaningful solution with answers and eventually to help decision makers to streamline their decision making. Then, of course, the holy grail is to quickly take action uh, with all this information uh, acquired to either a remedy or to prepare. So to cater to our various industry, we have a various portfolio depending on uh, depending on uh, your requirement. So we have solution towards like data creation and manipulation, uh, data management, which is uh, Adas Imagine or Adas Apollo. We also have solution that can be deployed in the cloud and mobile for uh, geospatial analysis, uh, workflow, manage workflow management, and on-demand analysis uh, in the field. So the 3D Singapore SAMSOC is a first of its kind collaborative environment for uh, our geospatial uh, industry partner. So uh, to encourage the use of all these uh, 3D geospatial data uh, residing in the sandbox. So uh, we are very honored to be part of uh, this initiative where different organizations can actually leverage on our location intelligence solution for some of these uh, 3D analytics. So uh, 3D is not really something new in our products. 
we have a years of experience starting uh, with the military, like almost 10 over years ago. And of course, uh, more recently is start to uh, leak into the commercial space. So one of the platform that we are offering in the sandbox is our Lucia Lightspeed, which is part of our Lucia portfolio. So uh, to understand this platform better, a picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is worth a thousand pictures. So let's watch a video which explains uh, our Lucia technology. Sachin, do you have sound? You need to turn on the music. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, just let me reshare. I think I forgot to check the setting. Oops. Meet Matt. Matt is a project leader who's just started his first software project with Lucia Technology. Matt's excited because he's heard about the technology's potential for geospatial projects. His challenge now is to get his mind around that richness and understand how he can leverage this potential in his project. Matt is used to working with off-the-shelf GIS applications. We can compare an off-the-shelf application to a standard family car. It does what it does, but has limited customization possibilities. Luciad products can be compared to a sports car, plus a warehouse of car parts and tools we can use these to fully customize the car. Moreover, the warehouse is continually updated with new state-of-the-art technology, unmatched by any other warehouses. So when we're ready to switch to the latest and greatest electrical engine, we simply replace the current power plant. That way, we can continuously update our car to changing demands. The standard family car, on the other hand, will soon become outdated. With this idea of sustainable applications in mind, Matt should not ask which requirements Luciad applications already meet, but rather, how can I use Luciad products to develop an application which meets all my current needs? Let's have a look at some of the requirements for Matt's project. Firstly, a lot of functionality will be ready to use in the Luciad applications that Matt can use to start his development. For example, his requirement for drawing complex shapes in 3D is already covered in the Lucy application, which is a part of the Luciad Lightspeed product. This requires no effort at all. Secondly, some functionality is available out of the box. This means a developer can use it straight from the API with a single line of code. Matt wants to combine highly detailed satellite imagery with a live video feed from a remotely piloted aircraft. The map in his application shows many layers on top of each other. He wants to make sure the dynamic video feed is always on top and gets updated in real time, while the refresh behavior for the static imagery can be tuned to whatever system resources are available. Defining this behavior takes one line of code with the Luciad Lightspeed API. So implementing this will be almost for free for Matt's team. Thirdly, some adaptation of API functionality could be required. This means more than one line of code, but is still mostly putting existing parts of the API together. Matt should be able to draw a protected area so that when a certain type of airplane enters this space, 
the visualization style will change and an alert will pop up. Calculating spatial relationships and styling data are the available building blocks for this use case. The specific way in which they are visualized is for Matt to define. Finally, there is some functionality that is unique to Matt's project. This will require custom development of a solution designed by his team. One such need is a specific cost function for cross-country route planning, taking into account a huge amount of intelligence on the terrain, weather, hostile sensors and dozens of features of a specific vehicle. Advanced algorithms crunching this data will be the proprietary business logic behind Matt's application. It will be integrated with Lucier technology for calculation and visualization. In general, as a rule of thumb, little or no effort is required for anything that is intrinsically geospatial and a common use case. On the other hand of the spectrum, there is the business logic of a project. For planning the project and identifying risks and quick wins, it's important to understand what existing functionality is supported in the API and where it is on this scale from ready to use to custom development. On the level of Luciad applications, functionality is ready to be used immediately by the user without any software development. As we have seen, software development with the API offers much more possibilities on top of that. The richness of Luciad's product API that lies at the fingertips of a software developer is virtually unlimited and ranges from simple configuration to advanced customization. This is what Matt needed to understand to assess the potential of Lucier technology for his projects. And it is why he's confident that his solution is ready to meet all of his customers' current and future needs. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that video. So, uh, so, uh, this, uh, this slide briefly summarizes uh, the Lucia portfolio capabilities that cover the full chain from connecting to data, analyzing, visualizing, and enabling to act on the information gathered from the data. So the products are designed to connect to uh, virtually uh, any data source. So uh, because uh, I think from the video, you all have uh, understand that actually this portfolio is actually uh, provided in a SDK or a API uh, a, a version. And using these uh, different uh, API and uh, SDK, you can actually create a custom connector to connect to virtually uh, any data source. Then, of course, we are we are we can support uh, most of the geospatial databases that is available today, and uh, over two hundred uh, different data format that come from a uh, live real time data feed to uh, some very domain specific standard like uh, defense and aviation. So we are able to analyze uh, uh, data by making use of the GPU uh, where applicable. And of course, we are guaranteed uh, some of the highest accuracy when you are looking uh, at data from a, a worldwide kind of uh, perspective. So uh, we have a cred credential from Eurocopters and NGA who test and ensure that some of these accuracy uh, are able to meet some of the stricter standard. So the visualization engine is uh, specifically de designed from the ground up for all these uh, dynamic geospatial visualization and uh, in a 2D and a 3D environment. So the one view is able to handle all the data in uh, all the different projection. So the user can actually use the right perspective at the right time. And uh, with many standard styling options available, but there's always this option to adjust or apply custom styling to view uh, some of the data that you may have. To, to give a clear and recognize, recognizable pictures to the end user. Now, of course, we are able to, uh, in some of these are very critical situation, you don't really want to see the data, but you want to act on it. So uh, our product actually offer all, some of these uh, very full interaction with all the data that you have and uh, editing option while keeping the focus on the situation with uh, some of the different view like map centric or multi-map view. So in the sandbox, uh, we have deployed uh, our Lucia Lightspeed, which is essentially a desktop application. And from the video, you understand within this uh, uh, desktop application, we have a ready-to-use application called uh, Rudy Lucy. So uh, 
I will, let's take a look at some of the things we can already do with the data from the sandbox as well as uh, with Lucy without any uh, development. So uh, this is essentially uh, what our Lucy uh, map centric interface will look like. So this uh, GUI is uh, really fully developed and ready to use. And uh, for some organization, organization that don't wish to develop an application from scratch, they can also use uh, Lucy as a base and develop additional functionality uh, uh, and uh, as an add-on and add to this uh, Lucy interface. So what you can see here now is uh, we can visualize uh, some of the data provided in the sandbox environment. So in particular, the 3D city model. So we can actually visualize this information in a very traditional uh, 2D view, supporting a wide variety of uh, georeference system. And changing the view from a 2D to a 3D view is actually just a click away. So there is no requirement to develop a separate code for another 3D view uh, application. So touching there's a question here. Do you have Viewer for the web? Yes, uh, we have another product for the browser, specifically uh, Lucia Ria, but uh, it's not covered during this uh, webinar. Maybe you can contact us again and, and we, can, we can link up and, and I can do a further explanation on the browser application. So other, other than the 3D city data that uh, we, are, we have seen, we can also ingest uh, quite a wide variety of uh, different data sources uh, out of the box. So uh, all these uh, operation is just a drag and drop operation to start viewing some of these uh, different, different data sources. So uh, some of the data that we support are like uh, 3D, uh, uh, third party uh, map services like Bing Map, OpenStreetMap, uh, OGC services, uh, WMS, WMTS, and of course the One Map API. And of course we support a major raster data format like uh, TIFF, uh, JPEG 2000, IMG, ECW, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we also support uh, some of the major uh, vector file format like uh, KML. So uh, this is a... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. So this is a KML file of a, a dengue cluster that is available in the sandbox. So you can actually click on all the different polygon and retrieve the attribute information pertaining to the different cluster. Then of course we support a uh, shape file. So uh, you can see uh, this is a shape file of uh, the region in Singapore and you can click on all the different polygon. Seeing the attribute information in on the right is a, a object property dialog box or in a table view uh, below. Then of course we also support like a CSV file <clears throat> so this is uh, my CSV file. So I created this uh, uh, myself. So uh, it's actually a CSV file of uh, all the uh, lottery location in Singapore with some of the highest uh, total winning. So we can see I can easily style some of this uh, information using my own styling. Uh, so instead of uh, the normal point, of course we, are, we can also support, we, I use a, a fortune god uh, icon and uh, the size is based on the number of winning uh, by the different outlet. So uh, for those who want to uh, decide on uh, where, where to buy uh, your total ticket uh, for the next Friday draw, maybe you can ask me for this file and I can share the information with you. So uh, based on this view, we can actually do uh, some very basic analysis, like for example, where, where can I go to buy the different total or uh, and uh, without going into some of the more dangerous zone like the dengue cluster. And of course I can also use the 3D model to actually visualize the, the building that I'm going and understand so that I don't get lost and, and, and miss the critical timing, et cetera. So other than all these uh, major raster and vector format that we are supporting, we also support a more unique format like uh, the ENC chart which is a, a electronic uh, navigational chart. So, uh, so all these are all ready to use by and, and the interface are already fully developed. 
So once you drag and drop uh, the, the ENC chart, all these uh, different styling and filtering tools are also catered for the specific uh, ENC chart. So, um, so in terms of uh, data, so other than the 3D city model data that you see, we also uh, can work with uh, a lot of other uh, 3D, 3D data, example, uh, point cloud data from a different sensor or derived from a satellite imagery. So similarly for a point cloud data, we can just uh, drag and drop the data into a viewer. But uh, for this video, I just going to show you that we can actually connect to our Lucet Fusion server, which is serving out this uh, point cloud data in a OGC uh, 3D tile format. So, uh, uh, so you can actually use our Fusion server to serve uh, some of these uh, data out as a 3D tile services. So everyone in your organization can actually connect and visualize uh, with the same data source. So uh, of course this helps you in your data management uh, strategy, preventing things like duplication or different versioning. So some of the basic tools they are already incorporated in Lucy are like the, the measurement tool where you can easily just uh, measure things like the area, the length and the height of uh, all the different uh, uh, data set. Then also uh, Yeah, so we also have some uh, very traditional uh, tool to help you to compare and and uh, compare two different data set uh, using the, the standard swipe tool or the uh, toggle tool and the pothole tool and of course we have a magnifying tool to help you to visualize uh, things with a magnifier so that you don't have to really zoom in and zoom out then we also have some of these uh, standard vector creation tool uh, in the Lucy interface to draw uh, things like point line polygon then we also have a uh, tools to create some of these uh, very complex uh, 3D vector uh, shape file that you can uh, use to draw a 3D shape. Then some of the analysis and uh, visualization method that we can do out of the box in Lucy is like uh, this uh, line of sight tool. So we, can, uh, we are harnessing some of the GPU accelerated technology and can see the performance when we are doing this uh, kind of analysis. So there is a uh, minimum uh, lagging and uh, the, the information is uh, updated almost uh, immediately. Then another way that we can use to, uh, we can do some uh, analysis is like, uh, we can use some uh, a movement planning tool. So uh, this movement planning tool, we can just draw the uh, route and, uh, and you can play around with the time slider to understand uh, the movement. Now, of course, you can also integrate something like uh, this line of sight tool. So as the movement is, as the car is moving, you are able to visualize where is the line of sight from the vehicle. Then uh, other than uh, viewing from a top-down view, you can actually change the way uh, you view this data uh, from a, to a first-person uh, view. So this is uh, actually very good for things like uh, route planning, be it uh, driving or walking simulation or even if you just want to drive through the data to help you to visualize uh, some of the, your environment. So these are just some of the capability that is being uh, offered from Lucy, which is a, a application that is uh, out of the box. Now, of course, as per the video has explained, there's actually a lot more things that you can do with the Lucia portfolio as API or SDK. So we can look at some of the more advanced uh, implementation that you can actually use uh, Lucia to do. So example, we are able to ingest some uh, real-time sensor. So uh, we are optimized to handle a very large amount of uh, data points and, and visualize them on, on a map. So this sample uh, shows a uh, flight uh, information. So uh, the flight uh, parabolic uh, trajectory and their animated tracks are visualized. Then of course we can do some uh, smart filtering and smart visualization. So 
Also, when you are at a very zoom away view, you won't see the 3D icon. And when you zoom in, you can actually see some of this detail uh, more uh, in, in, in a more detailed view. So other than uh, the flight uh, route, we can also ingest things like a video feed, be it a recorded or a live feed, uh, reading the telemetry and dropping the footage uh, over a terrain. Then of course, uh, we can use, uh, we can do uh, geolinking from the video footage to the actual ground. And uh, when you, the cursor is uh, anywhere on the video, it can tells you exactly uh, where is the location on the actual map. And of course, other than uh, overlaying all these, uh, uh, the video and the terrain, we can also overlay other information like a uh, raster vector to help you to make uh, better references and understanding of the surrounding. And of course, you can actually do some live analysis on the video as well. So example, on the bottom right video, now you are seeing, we're trying to measure the uh, forest fire that is uh, happening uh, on the hilltop. Then of course, you can actually save this uh, uh, information into a vector file or any other file and, and send this to uh, all the relevant agency for them to uh, do additional uh, measures. So a lot of our capability actually happened because of uh, customer challenges and feedback. And uh, because when we want to introduce uh, new capabilities, we definitely want to use it. We definitely want the, our end customer to use it. So uh, please continue to let us, uh, tell us uh, some of your different challenges and requirement. So example is this uh, radar feed uh, that we are supporting now. It's a very good example of how we help our customer overcome some of their challenges. So uh, this happened when uh, one of our customer come to us telling us that they have this uh, radar feed. If you, you are from, if you are uh, 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 experienced in reading a radar picture, you will know that usually the radar feed is uh, situated on a, a single uh, monitor where there's only the radar sweep and you can see some of the bleeps after and play around with the afterglow intensity and threshold. So uh, they say in order to correlate some of the, the information from the radar picture, they have to refer to another screen for the map view and understand where are the different uh, different data points are on the actual map. So we help them by combining the two different pictures into a single application. And now they are able to view the radar bleed as well as to uh, understand where are the actual location from uh, of the returns. So some of the more advanced implementation that we can do in with our Lucia portfolio example, uh, some of the newer 3D data. So like the three, uh, 360 degree uh, panoramic imagery. So, uh, so this is called the uh, reality capture devices, which is uh, one of our hexagon core capability uh, belonging to our Leica Geo system. So uh, all the scanner from handheld device to vehicle mounted are able to capture an entire physical world of em uh, environment in 3D. And uh, like the complete infrastructure of a city uh, above and underground or even an industrial facility. So these sensors are able to produce uh, 3D information like a uh, LiDAR point cloud as well as a uh, 360 degree panoramic uh, images. So of course, if you want to know more about all these uh, different scanner, you can actually uh, go into uh, our Leica Geo system uh, website. I think there's some uh, webinar coming up uh, by uh, some of the folks there uh, about more about all these uh, different sensor. So what we can do with uh, all these uh, different uh, newer 3D uh, data, data uh, so the all these uh, panoramic imagery. So the panoramic imagery is uh, uh, very different from the traditional 3D uh, images. So it actually immerse viewer in a way that uh, no other medium can. It put the observer in control of what they want to see and look at uh, within the image. So allowing them to see anywhere like uh, up, down, left, right, or even behind. So we are able to fully integrate all these uh, panoramic images with any other information presented in your uh, 3D view. So we can do things like accurately measure objects in a uh, real 3D and visualizing other 3D resources from uh, above ground to even uh, underground in a single uh, coherent application. So, uh, 
So we also able to ingest uh, uh, the underground data if you have, or you can use uh, some of the ground penetration radar from our light hydro system as well. So you can see we are able to visualize some of these uh, different underground data with uh, different uh, visualizing, visualizing style. Example for this way, uh, we are looking like an X-ray eye where we are trying to penetrate the ground and look at all the different pipes and uh, cable uh, lying uh, under the ground. Another way we can visualize this data is like a, a digging. So we can actually create a, a 3D uh, box and, and dig a hole into the picture for you to view uh, some of these data that, that is uh, underground. And of course, we can also ingest uh, information pertaining to this uh, underground information, uh, some of the attribute information and some of these uh, uh, information that, that could help in your decision making. So we are able to ingest uh, actually a very large uh, amount of data. So example, we can actually analyze uh, data that is, could be uh, as, as big as a uh, citywide information. And of course, uh, we are able to do the same kind of analysis uh, out, outdoor, uh, point clouds, uh, doing uh, this swipe tool, uh, uh, changing the different styling of the point cloud, as well as uh, indoor. So uh, if you have uh, some indoor scan, we are also able to ingest some of this uh, indoor information. And you can see that we can seamlessly navigate from an outdoor view uh, to an indoor view. So what you see uh, previously are just uh, most of the video are talking about uh, ingesting all the different data set that we are able to support. And uh, so now we go into some of the more advanced, advanced things like uh, combining everything together, uh, ingesting multiple different data set and doing some uh, very advanced analytics. So example is uh, referring back to the same uh, aviation information. Actually, we can do uh, some uh, implementation of uh, visualizing the information in a different way. So we can actually create something like a heat map or a density plot uh, utilizing uh, all the different uh, dynamic points to help you to understand uh, things like uh, which, which uh, trajectory is the most used, uh, where are the hot point and well, most frequent use uh, airport example. You can use this kind of different uh, analytics to tell you a story. So this is an example for more for the navigation uh, for the maritime industry. So we are able to ingest things like the ENC, the AIS uh, data from uh, AIS provider. Then of course we can overlay uh, things like uh, satellite raster data, uh, road vector data, 3D model, all in a single application to help you to understand and monitor uh, things that is happening uh, in your waterway. to give you a full uh, common situation picture. So other thing we can visualize is using the 3D model with panoramic as well as a, this is a simulated uh, GPS location of a bus. Then we can combine all the things together. Then you can see uh, the bus moving through the street And I'm not sure if you all have noticed that actually the, the, the bus is coming out from behind the building and going into a behind a tree. So if you were to understand that in a picture, this is actually uh, not possible. So, uh, so when, we, when we introduce a new capability, some of these are very small detail. We, we also take into consideration when plan for all these uh, newer capability.
So uh, other than the 3D model, the live sensor data, and the panoramic, you can actually integrate other information like uh, the status update of the bus, or even combine other 3D data set like uh, terrain elevation uh, and other uh, point cloud information. Now, of course, these are some other uh, implementation that we did uh, for uh, our customer. So the first one is like, uh, we are able to uh, visualize, uh, visual analyze tool for uh, noise pollution. So in relation to a uh, city population infrastructure. So these are uh, data set from uh, Germany. So uh, it's built on our Lucia Light Speed uh, solution. So you can see that we can see uh, 3D building data, uh, 2D transport infrastructure, then combined with some of these uh, real-time sensor data to calculate the noise pollution of uh, public transport at a given moment and location, and uh, of course, combine uh, all the different uh, spatial data. Then we also have this uh, uh, pollution monitoring or uh, analysis uh, uh, application. So we are able to visualize the rich, richness of uh, the data collected and a process for better understanding of health concern that could be uh, plaguing the citizens and health organization. So you can see we also can implement a, a time series, a time toolbar to play around and the data set. Then this is a, a example of a, a site monitoring uh, use case where we are monitoring uh, oil refinery uh, installation uh, with uh, ingesting life sensor from uh, the different tanks as well as monitoring the life asset uh, within the facility. Then of course you can do some uh, dynamic analysis like uh, rock planning and uh, all these kind of different analysis you can actually implement using our API and SDK. So I, I cannot possibly show uh, everything that we can do or what we have, but we do have a developer platform where you can learn more about our Lucet solution and watch some of these uh, implementation video that that that, uh, that is uh, that that we can show <laughs> and play around with some of our Lucet real sample. So just now there's a question about the browser application. You can actually go into uh, our uh, developer portal. And under Lucet Ria, there are some samples that you can uh, play around with to see some of the capability uh, of our browser solution. So, uh, and all this, I, I hope to, it can tinkle your mind and, and, uh, and see what you can bring to your mapping solution. So in conclusion, I think the, the previous uh, one site fit all uh, application solution will need to change, especially for mapping solution, because uh, every business has a uh, different requirement and needs. Uh, and they need a flexible uh, custom solution that actually help to solve all these uh, challenges and, uh, and, and, and problems. So uh, I will end my presentation with a final poll. So what are your uh, challenges uh, in implementation of uh, uh, geospatial uh, technologies? All right, we can close the poll. All right. I see that most of the participants have uh, challenges when ingesting of a uh, different data set. So uh, of course, uh, as you can see from my presentation, we are skilled to ingest a, a lot of the different data set. So uh, definitely we can help you in, uh, in overcoming some of uh, all these uh, challenges. I see uh, uh, quite a number of uh, people are also in uh, integrating business logic into a geospatial application. Uh, we, we like all these uh, very challenging uh, challenges. So I'm sure you can uh, live with us and we see how we can help you in your uh, geospatial journey. So uh, I also see some working with legacy system. So uh, we have been helping customer who are with us for uh, over 20 years and some of their platform 
have a, a hardware they are very very old and we we also uh, help them to upgrade uh, some of these uh, application uh, in their uh, legacy platform so i'm sure we can also help you tackle some of these issue with a uh, legacy system and lack of knowledge given our very uh, wide portfolio and uh, 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 solution in every sector i'm sure we have someone who can help you be in whatever industry you are from so uh, I hope uh, you all enjoy my presentation. Maybe you can go to the, back to you, Vanessa. Yes, so, so we're now we're opening this session up for Q&A. So uh, Sachin, you can have a look at the Q&A box. Um, let's start with the first question. Do you have VR, AR and MR capabilities? Uh, we have uh, AR, MR and AR uh, uh, arm where they specialize in doing some of these uh, AR, MR, and AR integration. So uh, of course, it's not uh, out of the box. So uh, in short, yes, we have some of these uh, AR, MR, and AR capabilities. Next question from Andy Chu. Can we see the road surfaces from the interface that you are showing? So it's, uh, I will say it's not actually our interface that is that that you cannot see the road surfaces. It very much depending on the data set. So if you have a very high resolution of the road surfaces, I'm sure we are able to see uh, the road surface uh, from your data set. Another question from Andy, can the point cloud data allow user to make measurements? Yes, definitely. Actually the point cloud data is uh, a lot more accurate as compared to uh, raster or any vector data set because uh, point, when you talk about point cloud, depending on the source, it could go to as close as millimeter uh, accuracy. About the point cloud updates throughout Singapore. So um, for, for SLA to actually gather the um, data, the 3D data, it takes a lot of effort, take a lot of costs. Uh, so right now, the data that's been housed on the 3D Singapore sandbox are um, really not the most updated, it's uh, four to five years old, um, but it's mostly for the user to experiment using 3D data. As we go along, we hope to be able to update it um, maybe once a year, but that will take some time. So next question, does it support CTGML and BIM directly? Um, we support BIM directly. So uh, for 3D model, uh, not CTGML directly, there is uh, some uh, conversion you have to do before we can ingest some of these uh, 3D uh, data from a uh, CTGML format. As a question from Shane Hao about 360 panel images from Leica product. Definitely, all the 3D panoramic uh, video that you've seen, all the, the images are from <laughs> our Leica digital reality capture. Uh, it makes Touching very, very happy, this question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Happy to see our someone. <laughs> um, question from Flora. Is the point cloud data from DJI UAV able to be imported to the platform? Uh, to us, we are not really the platform dependent. It's actually data dependent. So as long your data, your 3D point cloud is in, uh, I think, uh, LAS or E57 and uh, some of the supported format, we definitely can ingest uh, this information into our platform. Um, there's a question from Philip. Um, he's talking about challenges to implement 3D geospatial on the web. Do you want to take this further or maybe just um, maybe just you can answer and then we can take this offline? Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what are the challenges you are facing, but you can see we can actually uh, ingest and stream a 3D model, point cloud or any other 3D information through our Fusion server to a web application. So I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you can contact me and we can discuss more about what are the challenges you are facing. From Jules, have you successfully integrated with IoT platforms in the industry? Um, yes, we have integrated uh, some like GPS locator, um, handphone location. So all this information are, so if you understand the the architectural network of uh, all these uh, different devices, it will go into a server and we are able to ingest uh, information through the server into our platform. Okay, can we visualize underground structures? 
Yes, we can visualize underground structure, I can see from one of the video. So in terms of monitoring, it will depend on what are the sensor that is uh, embedded into all these different underground uh, uh, pipelines or, 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 or drainage. And we are able to ingest uh, all these sensor data uh, with some implementation and development. Question from Clinton. Can you talk about your interferometric INSAR processing tools? So we, so uh, the INSAR uh, analysis or processing is uh, uh, it's not supported in uh, Lucia uh, technology. Uh, so Lucia technology essentially is more for visualizing, uh, monitoring and understanding uh, all the different uh, in, uh, data set. So if you are more into INSAR, we do have another uh, data creation uh, product called Adas Imagine. So that one you support INSA, the INSA, uh, IFSA. So all the different uh, SA uh, creation tool are embedded within uh, Adas Imagine itself. Question from Matthew Gunn. Are there any preferred file formats that Hexagon is working towards? Uh, no, we don't have a preferred uh, file format. Actually, we, we prefer to work with all the different file format. But of course, uh, there are some uh, special cases like uh, where more to the military or government side where they have some different, very unique and special uh, file format that uh, not a lot of people are supporting. And with uh, Luci one of the key thing about Lucia is our API and SDK. You can actually create uh, all these uh, very custom connector to connect to some of these very, very unique uh, data set and visualize the information uh, in our platform. Question from Jules, does Luciat has AI ML capability or need external third party model? Um, we also have a AL or uh, AI and ML uh, 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 section. So they are also fully committed to working with uh, using AL or uh, AI and ML to, to do some of these uh, uh, analysis. So uh, we so we, we 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 have some of these uh, model and algorithm and we can easily uh, uh, plug in into uh, Lucia pl platform as well. Are the 3D models you showed considered as digital twins? I will say you can consider it as a digital twins because once you have a 3D model of the whole city and you are able to ingest uh, uh, additional information uh, into the platform, you can actually monitor these uh, digital twins as as though as like you are monitoring the real uh, world. Uh, from Jules, what the sizing of the server to run this yet? Uh, we do have a recommended uh, 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 sizing, so you can actually go to our developer portal to take a look because uh, every use case and every requirement is different. So uh, uh, that would really depends on what you are using uh, our Lucia platform for. Okay, uh, so we will share Touching's contact as well um, in the email contact in the chat box. Uh, so Hui San and Simin, um, do can you paste the email in the chat box? Uh, question from Clinton: What's the vertical accuracy of the elevation data? So this elevation is my data, so it really depends on your data. <laughs> so of course, it will depends where it's the sources of uh, your elevation information. So example, if you are taking from Sentinel, it will be like 10 meter. Then of course, if you are flying some aerial sensor, the accuracy will drop significantly. Okay, what are the machine specs to run the above demo? Can it be run on a Mac? Uh, so our platform is actually OS uh, uh, agnostic. So you can actually install on any OSs. Then uh, in terms of the spec, uh, similarly with the Fusion question, you can go to our developer platform. There's a recommended uh, specs uh, in our platform. Okay, uh, any more questions? Please uh, feel free to post it here. Uh, we have about five minutes left. So feel free to bombard, touching with all the questions that you may have about Hexagon <laughs> services. Uh, so just briefly um, about the 3D Singapore Sandbox. So it's housed on the GeoWorks, uh, at GeoWorks premise uh, a PSA building. And to use the sandbox, you need to uh, go to our website. Um, you can scan via the QR code and book an hour um, meeting a week before you want to come down to us um, based on the available slots. So meetings are via strictly via appointment basis only uh, due to COVID restrictions as well. 
And uh, there'll be some hexagon reps who can be there on hand as well to help uh, answer any questions that you may have on site. Okay, there's one question from Clinton, vertical accuracy for the 3D sandbox. Yeah, I thought I answered okay. that question. So touching, since we did touch a little bit about Digital Twins just now, can you share with the audience um, what recent Digital Twins projects that you've had at Hexagon around the ASEAN region that you can talk about? Um, Especially when it comes to um, combining the 3D data with uh, census, the city model with the census. I, so or I any specific industries. I think for, for our region, uh, in terms of uh, digital twins, uh, I think Singapore is one of the few, first few who have uh, all these uh, 3D uh, data set that you can actually implement. Then in terms of uh, the smaller scales, of course, we have working with uh, industry to more help them to monitor uh, uh, some of their um, uh, site or factories. Uh, and uh, of course, there are some which I cannot disclose openly. <laughs> Maybe for those who want to uh, understand more, you can uh, email me and uh, I, I, can, I can show you some of the use case we did uh, around the region. Now, of course, uh, for other parts of the world, we definitely have uh, some of these use case. You can browse our website at uh, hexagonjoespatial.com to look up for some of these uh, 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 information that we did, uh, some of these implementation that we did with uh, other, other countries and other cities. All right. Thanks very much, Touching, and everyone for attending this webinar especially from those who are Europe, Italy, and France, who actually woke up early to attend this webinar with us as well. Um, we hope to be able to see you at GeoWorks after the COVID-19 situation um, is, is much better. Um, to Again, to use the sandbox, do go to our website and uh, make the booking through there, and we'll attend to your emails from there. Thanks very much, and stay safe, everyone. Thank you, everyone.